Welcome to Science, Health and Healing Library of Children's Health Corps. I'm Dr. Majid Ali. The subject of this article is The Oxygen Model of Cancer, Part 4, A Heart-Rending Prediction. The main reason I decided to post this series on my Oxygen Model of Cancer on the Encyclopedia of Children's Health Corps rather than on Science, Health and Healing for Adults is this heart-renting prediction that I'm going to make here. In the next 25 years, there will be an epidemic of cancer among children. This is not fear-mongering. This is not a cheap thrill on my part to attract attention. In the first part of this series, Oxygen Model of Cancer, I briefly outlined what it is, and in the second chapter segment, I gave you my background. I told you that the first article I ever published as a young pathologist in a peer review journal that was a coincidence, was in the prestigious journal Cancer, and that was back in 1975 or 1976. I have written extensively on the subject, and I gave you the evolution of my ideas and the development of this oxygen model of cancer. In a nutshell, all clinical, experimental, biologic aspects of cancer are related to the fundamental derangements of oxygen metabolism, signaling, detergent functions, ATP energy generation in the cells, and cellular renewal. The three primal threats to oxygen functions are toxicities of our food, toxicities of our environment, and toxicities of our thought. That is the fundamental basis of my prediction. Those of you who have read any of my previous books or have looked at other segments on YouTube know that I have made a fairly large number of predictions always in writing. Why? Because I want it to be proven clearly wrong if I am indeed proven wrong. Because my predictions are made on the basis of my diligent study of the evolutionary intelligent design of the human body, nature chose oxygen to drive all aspects of human evolution. Every disease is evolution in reverse. So it has been very easy for me to see. In fact, in the closing months of year 2001, I wrote September 11, 2005. It was a book written in a fictionalized past tense about what I predicted would be the immediate, intermediate, and long-term consequences of the toxicities of the inferno at the World Trade Center in New York City. Those people who have read that book know that every single prediction in that book came true except for one. I thought they would complete the monument much sooner. Navy News and back in 1995 ran a front page story which started that long before the first veterans returned from Kuwait War, the first Iraq War, Dr. Majid Ali, a pathologist at Columbia University, made these five predictions. I was writing at that time a book, The Canary and Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, and I saw the oil fields going up, and I knew what goes up will come down. And so to me, there was not much to predict there. So my prediction, I hope that I'm proven wrong. I highly doubt that that would happen. 
So why do I make this heart-rending prediction? I hope that I would stimulate the interest of some parents, grandparents, teachers, public health policy makers to look at this prediction and ask what authentic measures can we take to reduce the toxic burdens on our children coming from the foods and that coming from chemicalized habitat, home, school environments, and that coming from stress. Absolutely children will suffer from stress. There should be no illusion about it. Children's Health Code is a foundation funded and founded by Talat, my wife and I, with a mission and a vision of providing authentic information for children's health all over the world, free of course, free of corporate deceptions, and yes, also free of ideological transgressions of some activists who really have no background in cancer, they do not have the capacity or the discipline to study cancer, and yet they want to be, they're curing cancer on the radio or the television or in their documentaries or the newspaper. They have a lot of blood on their hands. Should you wish to participate in our larger vision, please visit our website, www.kids123.org. It will tell you how you can support our vision. Or you can just Google Kids123, how can I help? And that will take you to the page where we make some suggestions. But most of all, we are interested in your own creative ideas of how we as individuals might make contributions, small or large, to protect at least some children of the world from this impending disaster. Again, I so fervently hope that I will be proven wrong. Until we meet again, may you be gracious, graceful, and generous in your spirit. Please do join me again. Thank you.